So the other night on the river, I was watching a load of mayfly uh, coming off hatching and being nailed by swifts and swallows. Incredible sight, um, really amazing to see. But what was even more interesting was the fact that some fish were rising and it was pretty clear to me that they weren't rising on the mayflies. Instead, they were taking little tiny olives, some really, really quite small flies. So I thought I'd tie this one for you um, as a kind of a, an alternative at this time of year when you think that the only thing to go for, for is a mayfly, but in fact, sometimes something very small can be just as effective. So in the vise, I've got a size 20 Hanak 390BL clink hammer hook, really tiny little hook, but very, very strong. Um, and I'm going to tie this pattern as an emerger, so that's why I'm using the, the clink hammer. Um, the tying thread I'm using is a Techstream 80 olive, which is going to form the body of the fly. It's going to be a little bit of glow bright tied in as a tiny little post at the head, just to help you see the fly. Um, some CDC feather and some of this wonderful stuff, some grizzle hackle. So let's get on with the tie. Now, I think one of the things about this fly, what makes it so effective is it fishes through the film. What I mean by that is it's not sitting on top of the water surface, it's actually poking through into those layers below. And especially on bright evenings, you can find these little emerger patterns to be the most effective thing you can fish because the fish will not come, what they say is all the way up. And because they're dazzled by bright sun, sunshine, the closer they come to the surface of the water, the less comfortable they are. So if you can get something that's just through the film, sometimes you'll convert those splashy little inquiries into actual hookups. And this is one of those patterns that can do that for you. Um, the other reason I love these hooks, although they're very small, they are ever so strong. And you're in no danger here even if you hook up with a real monster of catching, of actually managing to land it, they're really, really good bits of kit. Okay, so I've laid down a little bit of the, the olive tying thread, and I'm just gonna let the bobbin hang kind of level with the hook point, really. Just need to make sure that you leave enough room at the head, at the eye end, to get all of your other materials in. And this is where this starts to get a little bit tricky because it is such a small hook. But the insects I was seeing are this size and sometimes even a little bit smaller and fish were rising on them. So it is worth having something like this in your box. And they were definitely little tiny olives, not gnats or other terrestrials. So I've just clipped off a little couple of centimetre piece of the Globrite and I'm just going to split that into two kind of equal, roughly equal sized pieces. The other bit will be used for the next fly. And I'm just going to Introduce that onto the top of the hook. Attempt to do a pinch and loop, but the thread's all going wonky as it sometimes does. Sometimes you can solve that by just giving your bobbin a spin and shortening the thread down. Probably working with a little bit too much thread. So that will stop that from happening, hopefully. Whoops. All the fibers of the globe right poking off in all directions. Short the thread down again and catch that in on top like so. Still making sure that I leave a few millimetres at that eye end. Now a couple of turns, then I'm going to lift that and just put a couple of turns the other side just to make sure that's all caught in nicely and then trim off. The more room you leave at that eye end, the easier this fly is to finish off. So, you can see that the Globrite is helping to form a little bit of a, a bump at the thorax end to give that natural taper. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my hackle. So I'm using a grizzle hackle and what I'm looking for here is a really tiny little tip end of, of grizzle hackle. I don't want a great big hackle here that's going to dominate the fly and, and make it float in the wrong way. So I'm looking for one that's got a really fine tip. You, often you'll find those in the center of the, the feather, sometimes on the outside. 
that'll do. Yeah, no, that's too wide as well. I'm starting to get to the end of this one. Um, although it's still got a few feathers I could use for bigger flies, for the tiny little drives that I love tying with these hackles, I'm starting to run out of the good feathers. There is one that will do nicely. Perfect. And I'm just going to snap that in half. And then I'm going to strip off a few of the barbs to just give me a point to tie in, like so. So now I'm just going to lay that adjacent to the glow bright. Again, pinch and loop and just tie that in. Just catch it there for a second and just maneuver things around. What I want to, I'm just going to do that again actually and like where that went. Hold on. Again, fiddly little fly. Okay, so just lay it adjacent. Use my thumb now to trap it to the to the fly if I can. Nope, I've just dropped it. Good lord, come on. <laughs> I did tell you it was fiddly. Okay, another go. Worth persevering. Right, I've got it. A couple of turns, and I'm just going to make sure that that comes the other side of that glow bright thread. Like so. Again, just lift those two bits up and put a turn or two of thread the other side just to keep everything out of the way. And then I can come in with my tying thread and just use it to continue to build up the taper on the body of this little tiny insect. Okay, next part of the process, CDC feathers. And I want two little tiny ones here. Um, you can, of course, tie this in slightly larger sizes as a, as a larger olive, and if you're using an 18, you can get away with two. Even a 16, two feathers is fine. If you start to go up to 14s and 12s, I'd start thinking quite seriously about putting more than two feathers in, because you want this to be able to suspend nicely. Now, I've just pulled out these two feathers, and the important bit here is to line the tips up. If you can get two feathers out the pack that are already lined up, all the better but it isn't that difficult to, to line them up. Just make sure those stem bits are touching. Pinch it together. And I'm gonna measure this against my hook because I want it about the same length as the hook. So about there is good. Don't worry about the length of the um, glow bright at this stage because I can trim that off in a second, but that's about right with the CDC. Trap that down with a couple of turns. Just check everything's in place. And again, lift everything up couple of turns of tying thread and back the other side. Don't want it to go too far down. Then I can grab my scissors and trim off the butt ends of the CDC like so and complete my thorax area. Just like that. Really nice. There. Okay. So just going to lift that up and make sure everything's caught in nicely. Now this is an important bit with the thread. So finish off, hit this part with a th turn behind everything here. And that will affect how you tie the hackle in. And what I'm going to do now is take my hackle pliers, pinch the top, and I'm going to take a turn of the hackle, if it comes off the CDC, behind the thread like so. And as I come forward, I'm going to brush all of these fibers back, if I can get hold of them on a size 20, and the next bit needs to go in front of the thread. In fact, that thread just needs to be a turn back. So hold on. Yeah, just like that. Just a little turn over the top. So it sits just behind the eye like so, and then I can get my thread in to catch the tip end of that hackle. As I say, it is quite fiddly, but it is worth persevering. And it might take you a few goes to get this right. It can be quite frustrating. And it's always the bit right at the end that goes wrong, isn't it? So you've already done all the hard work and it's just the last couple of bits of the tie where it goes pear shaped. Okay, happy. So. Again, just going to use my finger and thumb, brush that slightly backwards, 
couple of turns of thread just to kind of tie everything down and kick everything backwards. I know it looks a little bit scruffy at the moment, but it is going to get a small haircut in a minute. Whip finish. And trim off. Okay, so first thing, I'm just going to make sure all of the hackle and the CDC and the glow bright are the same length. So I'm going to bring my finger and thumb in, pinch that together and just turn my scissors on their point and go in just like so and trim any of those bits of glow bright fiber that poke out above the top of the CDC like so. And then I'm going to roll that over and I'm going to do the same underneath with any of those hackle fibers. If I start to brush that forward, you'll see one or two poke out from underneath, like so. Just want to make sure that's nice and neat and tidy. There, perfect. So there we go. That's the finished article, a tiny little olive emerger with a thread body, a couple of CDC feathers, a little bit of glow bright just to help you see it on the river. And hopefully what will happen is you'll chuck that out on a two, two and a half pound tip it maybe, upstream, or oh, salivating thinking about it, up comes a trout and nails it in the middle of a load of mayfly. Now the other interesting thing is, one of the reasons that you need a good strong hook, um, like these size 20, um, 390 BLs is that often what will happen is the trophy fish will be sat at the back and will come up and nail the little tiny olive ahead of some of the other bigger flies that are coming down the river. There we go. Hope you've enjoyed the tie. Um, hope if you have a go at tying it, you enjoy the tie and if you tie it on, you get one or two fish to rise on it. Thanks ever so much for watching. Please make sure you give it a like and you give the channel a subscription. And thanks ever so much and I'll see you soon.